Hi, how are you? All right, I saw the... <laughs> We're live. <laughs> All right, I saw the comments from Cliff and, and um, the difficulties he's going through. We'll totally talk about that. My heart goes out to him, and I know things like mandates are on a lot of people's minds right now. We can totally talk about that. Um, and, and I saw that Neil Maranoth is in the house. Dude, dude, I love you. I love you. I love you more than air conditioning, dude. Um, it's fantastic having you here. And all the other saints, uh, Karen, Valerie. Um, did I see Bob Picard's here too? Lori Hal, how are you? Uh, Lourdes. All right. But I thought, and I know uh, even over the weekend and at the, at the funeral we had to go to yesterday, that was, that was the topic of discussion, the whole mandate thing. Um, the, uh, all right. But I thought I might start with something funny. <laughs> the, fun, the funniest thing I have is the fact that I love dearly. I love dearly Krabby Brian. <laughs> the uh, uh, okay, so the and I'm I'm a couple days behind, so please forgive me. But the Just Grace It podcast that Brian and Becky have, the last one that they had was called Our Lives. And uh, Brian was crabby because of the humility. Hum I'm sorry, humi humidity. Humility. <laughs> humidity. It, it they, was hilarious. Do they not have air conditioning up there? Uh, not in the barn. That's where he spent all day uh, working in the barn. Yeah. And he's like, it's hot. <laughs> I was sweating through my shirt. <laughs> I can't wait till the fall and winter get here. <laughs> mm. Um. I told Brian I love I love Krabby Brian and Becky said that uh, well if you love him that much I might I might give him over to you a few times. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so beneath the video there's a link to just grace it with Becky and Brian. I've I I've, that's my favorite thing to listen to literally. Um, but uh, even beyond Brian's crabbiness, and he quickly got over that, and it was hysterical. It made me laugh. They talked about he the the the, the latest one was about our lives, and they talked about rather frankly uh, about the highs and lows of ministry. And you'd be surprised how often they thought about quitting, and you know those pressures and the anxiety. I mean, those, those struggles are real, real. And so the two of them just being real and talking about just the difficulties they went through since they've been in the ministry was, for me, consistently compelling, and I, I loved it. Those are questions I always wanted to ask pastors uh, when I have them on. Maybe I'll make that, you know, interview number two type of question, uh, highs and lows. But I don't want them to bring up something that might get their own people mad at them. Uh, but I thought it was fascinating. There were some real lows, some really difficult times that they had, and they more than once almost quit. Have you ever been, have you ever, has the ministry for you, Hal, in all the years you've been doing it, ever been so difficult, or you had a period that was so difficult that you almost quit? Yes. Yes. Uh, the, uh, and sometimes it's just, depending on your activity level and what you're engaged in. I mean, for instance, you take people that are teaching four or five times a week and they're also working a, a right. job, doing tent making, and right. and you have a family, and, and that puts a demand on your, not just your time, but your phys physical and, and, right. and emotional resources. Right. And you get to a point where you just sort of say, hmm, I don't know if I can keep doing this. And there, there, there is that, I mean, if you really, I mean, grace pastors, they, they aren't in grace for the money, <laughs> that's for sure. No. <laughs> they, they are in it because they have a passion and a love for the truth. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and, and, and so much so that the, that passion and that dedication can you can you can overdo it too you have had a very close pastor friend who i mean was just doing too much all day mm -hmm. all night yeah. until he finally you yeah. said you've got to get away and took him to a place and he had a total breakdown 
Mm-hmm. Because he was just going at it too hard. Yeah. And eventually, he took his own life. And then we had the, which, which is not connected to the reason that he had that breakdown. That was a completely different thing, wouldn't you say? Yeah, well, I would say that they're related and one contributed to the other. But in his note that he left behind, he says, he just put it quite frankly. He said, I'm tired. I want to go home. Yep. Um, Somebody the, that reaches the end of their their emotional, physical, and spiritual resources. Right. And right. Uh, and they give up. Um, do um, did you ever think about quitting more than once? Oh yeah. Really. Oh yeah. Mm. Same way. Now for you, I've had jobs for, like that. Every every Monday morning, I'd get up and I said, "I'm going to quit this job." <laughs> And, right. You know. Now, did you ever? Um, were, were the reasons why you almost quit had to do similarly with uh, just overdoing it? Over, you were you were well, uh, over it over stretching yourself. It. it can be overdoing it. It can it can be in an environment that's less than ideal. It's having to interact with with people that. Uh, you just don't get along with, right? The, you know they make your they, life miserable, kind of thing. They make your life miserable. Uh, and I found that to be especially true in ministry. You know, more people I think have left ministries because of personal relationships than anything else. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, yeah. You know, uh, you see, you go to the extreme in a church. You see, for instance, a, a, a church split. There's always smoke and mirrors involved with people hiding behind uh, a facade. A facade of well, it's this doctor or it's this actor, it's this or that or whatever. But what it really boils down to a lot of time is it's just personal conflict. I mean, I you know, I spent a year going through Second Timothy. There is nothing about that book. Well, first, I spent two years going through First and Second Timothy, and there are nothing about those books that paints a rosy picture <laughs> about the, the, about being in ministry being easy in any no. way. No. Timothy had the grievous wolves. He had the Judaizers. He had the splits. He had mm-hmm. all the, and then he was in an, in a continent that had mm-hmm. given itself had all abandoned Paul and mm-hmm. given itself over to uh, mm-hmm. an apostasy. Yeah. You know. There's nothing about that that was going to be easy. The greatest understanding that I that that helped me in uh, constancy in ministry was the realization that I'm not in this for results. Right. God's not interested in results. God's already He knows what the result is. Uh, he doesn't need me to be successful. Right. He's going to be successful without. Without me, what he's interested in is act- activity. Right. The activities of righteousness. He's he's interested in in our walk and our relationship with him. Right. And so, consequently, we have you know like First uh, uh, Thessalonians uh, chapter four. Right. You know, moreover, it's required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Faithful. You know, God's more inf- interested in faithfulness, I think, than. <laughs> Than, than a, a big show of of what we would determine or evaluate as results, success. Right. Right. I mean, when people talk about success. What's a successful ministry? Well, most people's uh, definition of what a successful ministry is 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 results oriented. Right. They see people in the seats. They see programs. They see money given. They see uh, a lot of right. Right. Yeah. Now, with grace, you know, I, it's it, for me. You know, it it is. It goes back to that expression of being helpers of your joy. You find mm-hmm. you, you, which means if you know, you give them the gospel, and if they if they've accepted that gospel, there's joy there, and then you bring them into identification, and there's huge joy there, and yeah. then you have the coming glory, everything to come, huge joy there. So. You know the the, I mean the the real 
juice of ministry is mm-hmm. you you find one person and you give that person joy through sound doctrines of grace yeah. you find you would consider that a success yes on an individual basis that is the very reason why you're doing it to give mm-hmm. them that joy that peace mm-hmm. and that confidence in everything right. god made them in christ you know and where i find that reassuring is is not so much that I'm part of the equation, right? Which I may or may not be, but the fact right. the fact is that the doctrine works, right? Exactly. And it's not even you; it's just you sharing the doctrine, exactly. and the doctrine works. Well, you're just a vehicle of it, sharing it's the not doctrine. it's not right. mine, right? Exactly. It's something, but it's something I can give to somebody, <laughs> right? Exactly. And you give it to somebody, and, right? And they take it and they look at it, and all of a sudden they find it to be as comforting and helpful and and empowering, right? As you do. Right. Totally. Right. Yeah. Right. And then you say, that's great. Right. <laughs> right. And, and then you scratch your head because you give it to others and, and it's like pearl casting pearl before swine. <laughs> right. Right. And, uh, and you, know, you are, can't get discouraged over that because <laughs> the, the value of what we have is not determined by the way people look at it. Right. The value is, is in the having. Right. It's in the possession. Right. It's in the relationship that we have with I with, love that. With God. Yeah. I yeah. love that. And if somebody else wants to participate in that, sees value in that, well th- you know, yeah, that's exciting. That's hugely exciting. Cuz I know I mean for me, you know, hit, having hit bottom and come back, I know the doctrine works. Mm-hmm. That doctrine brought me that joy and that peace. I want everybody else to feel yeah, you know, and mm-hmm. uh, so when you finally reach through to somebody through mm-hmm. that doctrine, I, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know of a greater high mm-hmm. than that, really. Yeah. You know, the times that I would <laughs> weep would be when I see people in such dire straits in right. their lives that just a little bit of grace doctrine in their lives would totally revolutionize their life. Totally change their life, right? And they can't see it. They refuse to see it because they want to grind away at their own agenda and their own energy, right? And their own strength, and they don't realize the value of the gift, right? Right, exactly. Because, or you have somebody you can take them to the water, but you can't make that horse drink. Right. And, you know, uh, somebody in particular I'm thinking of who, you know, I wanted this person to understand the doctrine and start living your life according to that doctrine because it can completely transform you and all these issues that you're having. Mm -hmm. They won't do it, you know, and it's really disappointing. Well, and I often I hear responses. Well, how do how do you make that work? That's just the point. You don't make it work, right? You let it work in you. Yeah, yeah. it's it's the word of God that effectually works in those that believe, right? And that belief is not just the the faith that we exercised in trusting Christ in His finished work, right? That 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 faith, that belief, is the ongoing belief where we trust in the principles, right? And the doctrine that was delivered to us. Right. Yep. Because that's that's what has practical value. Right. Right. I think um I um so I you know, if you have I mean and I was talking to uh was it, maybe this was Mike. I can't remember who I was talking to, but I was saying I remember saying to somebody, look, I would consider a success in ministry, somebody like these pastors I've had on who've spent years and years and years just, sim- they had a small flock, small aff- assembly, wherever, mm-hmm. you know, that small town Grace Church somewhere, and that pastor fed that flock with consistently standing on those sound doctrines of grace the in, the over the entire course of his ministry, that's a success. Oh, absolutely. Feed, feeding those small, even even if you're looking at 10, 20 people in your church, mm-hmm. feed in your little, you know, small town church, feeding them, keeping them fed, mm-hmm. staying in the word, rejoicing in everything you are mm-hmm. in Christ, you know, that's a success. Well, if, the, if God's standard is faithfulness. Right, right. That's success. Yeah. God's standard is faithfulness, yeah. teaching no other doctrine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so... And and there are always going to be people that will judge you, right? Uh, 
Paul experienced a lot of that type of condemnation. No more, no more was person was more engaged in, in ministry than the Apostle Paul. Right. And and he comes along and he says, you know, it's he said, it's a very small thing that I be judged of you or of man's judgment. And he said, yeah, I judge not mine own self. Right. So th there is not a lot of value <laughs> sometimes in sitting around thinking, you know, uh, am I doing what's successful? Am I doing what's, uh, you know what to do if right. you've read and studied the scriptures, just right. do it. Right. You know, he said, if I do this thing willingly, uh, um, uh, I have a reward, but if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. He was going to preach the gospel, whether he was <laughs> doing it willingly, he was going to do it because it was the right thing to do. Right. He was going to be faithful in his charge. Right. Um, you know, a lot of times people don't do anything because they're trying to sort out how they feel about it. Am I doing it for the right reason? That's a fruitless exercise. You can't judge whether or not you're doing it for the right reason. If the scriptures tell you to do it, do it. <laughs> Let God sort it out. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't judge the quality of that. I don't know. I had, um, it was a thing Mike and I did, and uh, Mike had a great attitude. Mine was not, and, I, and this was pointed out to me. And I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm doing the good thing, the same good thing Mike's doing, but my attitude needed adjusting that day. Mm -hmm. And he's totally right, you know. And I'm like, I, you know, I, I will probably maybe get no reward or half a reward for this thing we both did at the same time because. Uh, 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 and so motivation is is a big deal. Like if you've got to be, you know, I mean, you've got to be, you know, what the right thing is to do, but you got to. Be motivated to do it for all the right reasons, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. I, I don't wouldn't you agree with that? Yeah, I we should do it for the right reasons. But if we still know what, <laughs> if we know what the right thing to do is, right, then we should do it anyway. Right. <laughs> you know, it's uh, personally, I think if somebody's motivated by rewards, they're doing it for the wrong reason anyway. Right. Right. That's totally agree. Totally agree. You're doing it out of grace because of the yeah. grace that was shown you. Yeah. You know. And um, but um, grace and gratitude. Yeah, attitude of gratitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Definitely. All right. This is the Grace Life Podcast. We are your mad bad brothers in Christ. <laughs> mad in the sense of mid acts dispensational. Bad in the sense of blessed and delivered. I'm some guy named Joel. This is uh, Pastor Hal Beckemeyer, the Dean of Theology of the Beckemeyer Grace School of Hard Knocks. <laughs> it's awesome having you guys here. Uh, we, will, we will get into all the meat of everything that uh, you're talking about in the live chat. Absolutely. I see the comments. Um, let me just uh, point out real quickly, we've got beneath the video a whole bunch of links. Um, uh, we've got links to... Um, Still, we have links to uh, Sam Gerhardt's GoFundMe pages. Uh, you know, if you have the ability and the opportunity to support a brother with stage four colon cancer, uh, I love me Cowboy Sam. He's a beautiful, beautiful man. I still have the link to uh, Crystal Coleman's um, uh, PayPal account if you want to help her out. Uh, has anybody has anybody seen on Facebook any updates about Crystal Coleman? I have not. I know that there was a relapse, and they put her back on the ventilator and stuff, so um, worried about her. Uh, we've got, uh, I've got links to a whole bunch of uh, goodies. We've got Greg Reeser's uh, Digital Grace Radio Station, Grace Messages 24-7. Check it out. There's uh, links to places where you can stock up on uh, Grace books. Um, and uh, there's a list of Grace churches that Sharon McKenty upholds. Uh, Grace Beyond Borders on the mission field, support them. Uh, David Reed's Gospel Quiz, great way, a great link to share with somebody if they want to, you know, it kind of challenges them. Do you know if you're going to heaven and why? It's an awesome little quiz. I, uh, and then there's a link to my own personal Google Drive where you can download 4,800 
across grace books, articles, and charts. I kid you not. More books you could ever read in a lifetime. Uh, links to all of us on social media, a link to a page on our website where you could uh, financially support the ministry. Um, we uh, absolutely make full use of every penny that we we get here, and it's used in the service of the ministry, the saints, keeping the online programs going, um, so your support would be greatly appreciated. Uh, we have uh, beneath that some uh, grace articles. I got some articles on STAM talking about the grace of God, the judgment to come, some grace videos. I've got a link to the I Love uh, Krabby Brian uh, <laughs> podcast, which was awesome. Um, uh, Hal and Fred from Monday, Randy White was, had some interesting videos yesterday. He went off on the Afghanistan fiasco and it was hysterical. Uh, David Osteen announced some new books, all kinds of stuff. There was also a video that posted last night by Jordan asking if uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are in the New Testament. <laughs> uh, I didn't get a chance to watch it. It's on my to-do list. Hopefully, I'll, I'll get to it. He also had a big old uh, message on uh, prophecies, the uh, reading prophecies time clock. Um, Bob Picard, Farewell to the Ephesians. How can you not love that? And I have links now, too, to uh, like Steve Ross, uh, his um, uh, message on crowns, uh, which is on Facebook. Steve Atwood's latest message on the local church. Uh, all that good stuff. Uh, beneath that, there's a link to page on our website where you could go uh, visit uh, to uh, get stocked up on uh, Christian news. And there's a ton of Christian news and stuff um, I'm going to throw at Hal, too. Uh, so there's a ton of things to talk about. Um, how about we go through the comments and we'll, we'll get to Cliff here and we got, um, we'll start with Karen Gray. How you doing? It's great having you here. She says, uh, grace and peace saints whom I love so much. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Here we got into, and I can't see the cliff comments. Apparently he was struggling. Is that right? Um, yes. Yes. And yes. He, uh, am I to understand is probably uh, where he lives. There's the man, the, uh, jab mandate, and now uh, if he's he just has no options for uh, I, he's got to sell his car and get paid rent and stuff. Is that I don't it? I don't know if that is a part of the equation or not. He didn't say. I mean, it wouldn't. I mean, he if I remember right, he had his own business, didn't he? And it wouldn't shock me if he's lost everything because of you know bad economy. Um. Well, they were depending on two incomes. From what right. I got from from the text that I saw, and that they were going to be losing one of those, okay, for whatever reason, okay, yeah. Um, there are a lot of companies that have just disappeared. Yeah, and there are a lot. Yeah, there are a lot of companies that disappear, and there's um, a lot of people losing their jobs too. I know. Right. Uh, uh, in fact, we had a. Uh, Mike and I had uh, a man uh, that had moved in with us uh, for a couple of months. He moved out yesterday. Yeah, I'll tell you all about that after the podcast. Uh, he, um, but he was very worried. Uh, he's he's going to lose his job because they're going to mandate, and he's not going to do it. You know, and it was a very upsetting thing. And I know a lot of people are feeling that way. I mean, even if you're living in a state like Georgia, it's possible you may very well lose your job. You know, if uh, you're working, there's, uh, in fact, um, I think uh, there's a lady here that works at Disney that's going to leave because they are also mandating. Uh, she's been with them years mm -hmm. and years. Um, I was, I would have left if I, we had not already parted ways. <laughs> yeah. um, my question to you, Hal, is, is it, is it okay to resist a mandate? Oh, I, th I think it's okay to, to resist. Uh, I I have to say that, you know, perspective has a lot to do with, with that. 
Uh, like you said, you you said you would have have left Disney. Well, you're a single guy. That's that's a lot easier thing for you to do. Right. Very than, true. Than a younger person with a family. Right. Um, you know, people say, well, you know, move someplace else. Well, I, I'm telling you, when I was younger and and my kids were young, I didn't have the money to move anywhere. The uh, I was just struggling to make ends and ends meet. So. Uh, I sympathize with and, and understand why some people would just capitulate. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure capitulating would be the wisest decision either, because it may very well mm. mean medical issues. You know, mm. your insurance company isn't going to pay for uh, side effects you have from that thing. Mm. Now, about I just call it that thing? Yeah. If you and and you're looking at potent, not just health issues for you, which may immobilize you, but you also mm. are looking at financially bankrupting your family because of the health issues well, on the bills. And yeah, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm not sure it would be such a wise thing to put that kind of a burden on your family either. Well, that's true. But, it. but then again, now a lot of insurance companies are going to are going <laughs> to delete your coverage if you refuse. Well, it's, and then what do you do? So you're going to say, "All right, I'm going to refuse it." Which I'll is pay for all my medical expenses yeah, out of my own pocket. Which is ridiculous because they're not going to pay for the side effects if you know in order to keep the mm. coverage, and yet they're going to refuse to pay for any kind of issues you have if you do take mm. it. What you know, it's a no win. It's a no win scenario. So <laughs> correct. I, I, so <laughs> which which one is the right decision? I don't know that <laughs> either. It, to him that esteems something to right. be unclean, to him it is unclean. Now, our position since the very beginning, we had always said that everybody is at liberty to be fully persuaded in their own mind yes. about what they're to do. And there is nothing in the Bible that tells you that you must do it. Um, so, Or that you must not. Right, right. Uh, I think common sense would win out in this kind of a scenario, and I think this kind of a thing is only going to get worse because it's just only going to inevitably lead to the mark after we're gone. Mm. You're, you're going to be looking at total loss of freedom, mm. total loss of all kinds of issues. We may very well be living through the very reason why America isn't mentioned in Revelation. <laughs> You know, you remember we had talked before about mm -hmm. America being so broken and bankrupt. That's why they're not mentioned. I mean, there's all these possibilities, but we may very well, very well be going through that before we get to it. So you got to do what you think is right. You got to do what you think is going to be best option for you and your family. And I'm not sure doing the thing is going to be the best option for your family if it means you're not going to be here. You know, but then there are those I know who would disagree um, so anybody has any thoughts on that? Yeah. Now, when it comes to Cliff's, um, Cliff's circumstance, you know, you, one thing you could do is set up a, I don't want to say GoFundMe, but something online where people could donate, it, uh, digitally if they feel, you know, if they, if they want to try to help a brother out, make sure you have that option available out there online to receive donations. Mm. That's one option. Uh, for me, I think, um, I would be relying on storable foods until I could find some way, some sort of alternate economic, you know, <laughs> alternate mm -hmm. m un a market where you could actually survive, mm -hmm. buy and sell, being outside the system. Mm -hmm. I also think um, there's a part of me that wonders if this might not also be our Elijah moment. You know, you remember when Elijah was... You know, after he had that big victory on top of that mountain with Baal, he was on the run. He thought everybody was trying to kill him. And God, he wept. God told him that, uh, you know, what's, what's your problem, dude? There's, I've, I have 7,000 men who will not bow the knee to Baal. Mm -hmm. And I can't help but wonder if we just, we're so isolated, we're feeling so alone, we don't realize there are millions of people out there who are not willing to bend the knee to this nonsense and we may have a watershed moment where there'll be enough pushback that we might actually be able to be free to not do the thing if that's what we choose to do hmm. um so I, and there were videos where on a certain channel i probably can't even mention <laughs> whom i love a christian libertarian and he was he was showing a video of um 
a video I really probably can't even talk about. But basically, it was I think it was the Arkansas governor was having a town hall, and all these people were talking about the thing, you know. And and I mean to tell you, everybody in that room, um, it was phenomenal. It it really encouraged me. Uh, they uh, there was the one lady that uh, was a Christian and said, "Look, governor, we love you, but." I'm not going to bend the knee. And the place erupted in applause. And you had one guy that just said, where's, where's the insert sheets? That's what I want to know. You want me to trust this thing? Where's the insert sheets? Of course there's none. And um, it was awesome. It was epic. And it was encouraging. And you know that there's millions and millions of people out there. Totally agree with you. You have uh, also encouraging news. Is, you know, the, we all saw the video in France of the police going up to the people in the cafe in Paris and asking for their papers, mm-hmm. which just, I mean, you know. Um, it, would, it would appear to me that the French should have had enough of that when they were thank occupied you. by Germany. <laughs> exactly. Mm. But the, a lot of cafes in Paris are saying, we're not going to enforce these mandates. We're, mm. we're not going to look for people's papers when they come and eat with us. And there's uh, uh, play, uh, restaurants and stuff in New York saying the same thing. Um, which is encouraging. Uh, riots are a good sign. You have people. There was one lady uh, at the Arkansas town hall meeting with that governor. She's like, she was. I remember she was talking about her family that a couple of members that died from COVID and stuff. And there, she was talking about the thing, and uh, and all of a sudden it was, don't you smirk at me, governor? You do not smirk at me. <laughs> mm-hmm. The people are mad. Mm-hmm. They're rising up. So, I don't know, at the risk of uh, getting censored on our own uh, YouTube channel, I'd say be encouraged. And, um, you know, if that's what you feel you need to do, do it. And be prepared to endure hardships, hmm. whatever they may be. And you never know where your help might come. We'll definitely keep Cliff Matthews in our prayers. If any of you guys have any thoughts about it, I'd love to hear it. But uh there's a part of me that just wonders if this might not be our eliza moment and we just don't realize it yet uh because uh let's see here we've got neil maranatha is in the house my dear brother he says grace and peace to all the saints hi hal and dear karen i i love you i love you neil it's so great to have you here brother we literally pray for you every single day you and your family if i remember right we have um your wife's mandy uh garrison i think your brother is uh, nigel we pray for them all all those dear all those dear people all the people that are part of your family are definitely dear to us and um i miss you and i hope you're great uh, Neil says, strange, I can't see his name. Dan says the same. He can't uh, see certain people either. Where's Dan? I don't have it on top chat either. Neil says, uh, I just ordered the Bible Brian recommended on me. We, the one with uh, no verses, etc. Looks interesting. Oh. <laughs> no verses? Uh, you mean no notes? Yeah, it must be no notes. There's no way you can get a Bible with no verses. <laughs> I don't know. It would be kind of like your, your book out on oh, the Oh, yeah. <laughs> on eternal security. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, experiencing problems, going to sell their car to make rent. Sounds like a rough go. Yep. It's going to be a rough go for a lot of people. And I'm going to... Um, do some uh, more, a few more thoughts on uh, suffering on uh, tomorrow night, uh, just to kind of go over the major points. I mean, it's been forty messages, and I've had a few detours here and there, and I want to get back to the heart and core of everything. So we haven't suffered enough yet, right? <laughs> right. Just in case, I feel like we were ahead of the game. I feel like I should have started that series a, a year later, frankly. Um, but we got Bob Picard in there. Hey, we got Valerie here. How you doing? Bob Picard's here, my dear brother. What's going on? Um, um, Bobby Wilson's in the house. How are you? She says, good morning, sweet brothers and sisters in Christ. I love you all. I love you way more. Hope you're all settled in your new place. Um, 
Bob says, what's happening with Cliff? I see your comments. Poor guy. Poor guy. Um, Lori Howell, how are you? Karen says, nightclub podcast. I have no idea what you're talking about there. Uh, just Grace at Podcast is what I was thinking of. Uh, Ludis is here. Good morning, all. Hurricane Grace weekend when it passed through Puerto Rican, now in Haiti, that also had an earthquake of 7.4. Pray for them. I had a bunch of articles about Haiti uh, on there. There's a lot. That poor, <laughs> poor place. Um, uh, there's, uh, it's on our website, the uh, news articles, but Christian organizations send aid to Haiti as death toll rises to nearly 1,300 following massive earthquake. Mm-hmm. We only have Jesus now. Death toll from earthquake rises to almost 1,300. And then you got, you got this tropical depression uh, drenching them. All kinds of articles, too, about Afghanistan and the, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's a, now that, now, and now the Christians are just basically being slaughtered openly out there. It's awful. Well, at least it's it's coming. A, a lot of uh, pastors have received communiques from the Taliban that say, we know who you are. Right, right, right. Um, right. Uh, Valerie says Hal has itchy ears this morning. Yes, he does. It's hilarious. Neil uh, says, yep, Karen, my daughter would love this music. Uh, <laughs> new song this morning. I was, I was very excited to play it. Uh, Lori says, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. I love you, Lori. How are you? Uh, Karen says, hey, friend, whom I love dearly, Hal, also, whom I also love dearly, beautiful Lourdes. Uh, love you all too thank you very much Chris Nelson is here my mad bad back brother out there in Utah awesome uh, how are you how's that back doing how's the family uh, we got somebody Steph Ride Steph 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 Ray Raid I don't know I'm, I've never seen her before uh, Sharon McKint <laughs> I love you, Stephanie, too much. <laughs> I love you dearly. I cannot wait to hang out with you and David. I'm counting the days. I need me some, I need me some read love. I'm just going to swap back and forth between you and David. Um, I can't wait to get out there. Uh, you know, and there's the thing, there's all these news articles, Hal, about their, them, the White House mulling over, uh, banning interstate travel if you've not been vaccinated. And I'm just like, dude, just wait until after October. That's all I want. So I um, might have to make plans, have some backup plans just in case, and then just leave what? How long? Should, how many days should I give myself to drive up to Michigan? <laughs> uh, well, you can. You're young enough. You could easily do it in two. Oh, okay, okay. Although God I would drive me. it straight through myself, but okay. Uh, Sharon McKenzie says I need prayer. My grandson, age nine, just tested positive for a COVID. Uh, has fever, stomach, and chest hurting, and eyes hurting a lot. Thank you. Okay, we will absolutely pray for her. Uh, Sharon McKenzie. You said nephew, right? Grandson. Grandson nine. I have to. I have so many names on here. I have to make little. Ah, okay. Richard Church posted about the Bible. Brian talked about is the Reader's Bible. No verses, just text. Oh, I see. You get the text, but just not the verses. Uh, I see what you mean. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's All paragraph right. style, which yeah, which is an interesting way to read. Yeah, totally, totally. Uh, I went that way in my book. It's paragraph style for those blocks of verses. Um, got some criticism for it too. Uh, Steph says, "How are you, Neil?" Yeah, isn't Neil? Uh, isn't it great to have him here? Um, hey, Dan's in the house. How are you? Lori says, praying for you, son. Praying for your uh, grandson. Um, 
Neil Marinaldo says, I'm okay. Uh, that I'll take that as good news. I'll take an okay Neil any day of the week. Awesome. Um, Lori says, good morning, Pastor Hal. And better half, sorry, can't remember her name. <laughs> but remember Marilyn, forget about Hal. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah yep uh karen says i see the plastic pineapples arrived yes it has uh i also got some um let me see i saw the comment about my itchy ears yeah uh actually i'm trying out a new pair of hearing aids and right now they make my ears itch <laughs> uh i did get some um yeah I thought I was getting two huge packets of these booklets, but I only got two booklets. Uh, the uh, These were really popular at one point. Uh, this is called uh, Bible Contrast. Uh, I get this, uh, I ordered this from the Brain Bible Society. Arguably their best booklet uh, ever. Um, and it's a, it's a apples and oranges. It's a, it's a breakdown of kingdom grace. You know, and all these different um, aspects of kingdom versus grace. It's a great little booklet to give somebody, I think, uh, the, who may be, um, who may have questions about, well, if how can there be, uh, I'm not so sure there's any distinctions between Paul and, every, and everybody else. Isn't it all just the same thing? All that, that kind of stuff. This would be a really good booklet to give them. And to really come to understand the uh, distinctions that really do matter between those two programs. Um, I remember this booklet was an inspiration to a section uh, that I put in the uh, message I did at the Jordan Conference last year. And that section also made its way into the prayer chapter of my book i i kind of i just took the idea and kind of ran with it and did my own thing mm -hmm. uh but when you have a list of the breakdowns of distinctions between the two programs it's really i think it's really beneficial yeah. uh so I, I think it's interesting that, that so many people can't see the distinctions right you know they they see one gospel they see uh no difference between the church and and the nation of israel they don't see any difference between prophecy and mystery. Uh, right. Even the extreme, they don't really see the difference between law and grace. Right. Uh, it's 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 just interesting to me that that uh, people can look at it and it's is very clear clear. It's very conspicuous when you read the scriptures and let them speak for themselves, and, and yet. People scratch their heads and say, well, you know, I don't get that. I don't see that. I don't understand that. Right, right. Uh, I can remember my first conversations with Fred <laughs> many, <laughs> many, many years ago. Yeah. And he says, I don't see that there's a great big difference in, in what we're, you know, in, in our positions. And I says, <laughs> my, my comeback to that is that little bit of difference is all the difference. Right. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. You need to go look at that little. Once you understand that little bit of difference, you'll find out that it's not so little. That it's. Right. It's. It's. It is a big deal. Right. Uh, you know that's in the positions of the of starting the church, the body of Christ at Acts two or Acts nine. People say, well, there's not a whole lot of difference in that. Well, yeah, there's seven chapters difference, but uh, yeah, there's a there's a. A whole world of difference. Yeah, totally. Not just doctrinally, but experientially. Right. Uh, I, I just grew up always thinking that the reason that you have masters in theology and these guys with all these degrees, as long as they're armed, like some of these pastors that in churches near us here, uh, I always figured that the reason that you got those master's degrees and stuff was so you could have an intellectual way of explaining away the distinctions in order to make them all the same. Yes. I mean, you know, that's because mm -hmm. <laughs> you need a master's to figure out how to make it all fit together in the same program is basically <laughs> what it would boil down to. Right. They? I mean, what else yeah. would you need, need it for? Well, <laughs> my... My experience with that is, is people grow in their educational experience and they add alphabet to their name 
is basically all they're doing is adding different layers of filtering that they use to read and study the scriptures. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, the Bible is going to mean many different things to many different people, depending upon the filter that you apply to it. Totally. You know, that's that's the thing. And people say, well, you know, everybody uses filters. Yes, we do. Absolutely, we do. The but the, the filter we use needs to be biblical. Paul gives us a filter. Right. He says the word of truth must be rightly divided. Well, right. you know, there's a, there's a principle. There are divisions in the scripture. Right. So if if it, it's you're going to do it rightly, then you've got to recognize what those divisions are. Totally. And and, uh, and how they are uh, doctrinally applicable and how they're practically ap applicable. Yeah. If you're reading somebody, as we do the statement, reading somebody else's mail, you can read somebody else's mail and, and derive great education from it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think about reading some of the, you know, even historically, I go back and I look at, at some of the correspondence between John Adams and Thomas Jefferson. Right. And, uh, you know, does that affect me in any way? No, but it's not to me. Right, but but it's interesting, and, and I learn things about the men uh, when I read God's letter to Israel under the Kingdom program. It's not written to me, but I learn an awful lot of things about the nation of Israel, about God Himself. There's there's a great deal to to know and understand without having to say, well, you know, that's written to me. It's written for me, right? But it's not written to me. I don't know, man. I, I find myself often inspired by a lot of those Old Testament stories, even though it's a different yeah. program. Different, yeah. It's still faith. Still people yeah. doing extraordinary yeah. things. Yeah. Well, I have no patience for people that say statements like, don't waste your time. Oh, I know. Don't oh, waste your I time know. reading I, the oh, Old I Testament know. or reading the Gospels. Oh, to, me, to me, that mentality, you have completely and totally escaped God's design and the way that the scriptures work. Romans chapter 15. First they're, Corinthians They're 10. written for our learning. Yeah. You, you gain patience and hope, understanding how God has dealt with man in all of his dispensations. Right, right. Well, I mean, they're just flat out completely um, ignoring or just... Uh, um, <laughs> Uh, disobeying really the uh, instructions of Paul in First Corinthians ten right. when he's talking about Moses, yeah. they were all baptized yeah. unto Moses in the mm -hmm. cloud and in the sea, and mm -hmm. they all did eat the same spiritual meat and drink the same spiritual drink, and they all drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Mm -hmm. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples, to yeah. the intent we should not lust well, after evil things as they also lusted. Absolutely. And you consider what he says in Romans 4 about Abraham. Mm -hmm. The story of Abraham was literally written for us also. Absolutely. You know, yeah. um, absolutely. So uh, you're just ignoring Paul if you're if you're refusing mm -hmm. to go to the Old Testament because mm -hmm. Paul tells you to go back. And how are you going to be able to yeah. understand a lot of the mm -hmm. stuff Paul says when he's got 140 references to the Old Testament? Yeah. Well, see, that's the difference between studying and teaching right division versus studying and reading and teaching your Bible rightly divided. Right. There is a world of difference between the two. Right. Right. Uh, Charlotte says, uh, good, Charlotte Allman, how are you? It's fantastic to see your name here. Uh, I really appreciate you sharing your time with us. She says, good morning, Joel and Hal. Grace and peace. Neil says, praying for you also, Lori. Um, Karen says, great, just trying to keep the body aware. Um, um, well, let me see here. What Valerie says, overdoing good points, even God rested. Um, the uh, They're complaining you're a little over to the side there. Uh, Sean McGee is in the house. Good morning, all. Take They don't want me lopsided, huh? <laughs> That's right. They want to get the full picture of how. Uh, Sean McGee says, good morning, all. Taking a break to... to, to 
break due to the torrential rain can't work with electric electricity in the rain that's fantastic i hope it rains huge until the podcast is over brother how you doing man how's life for you don light oh don light fritz is here how are you she says good morning to everyone good morning to you um thinking gain is godliness karen says Valerie says, when I am down, I focus on others more than my own. That's a very good, good approach. Mm -hmm. I would focus on, I would focus on scripture. Mm -hmm. um, well, focus on scripture, but focus on putting scripture in action. And, and a lot of people, that's, a, that's a very valuable point of view. I, I, I love that point of view. The idea that if, <laughs> if, if you're experiencing difficulty, go find somebody that's in similar or even more difficulty and help them. <laughs> I always had a friend who, no matter if I was ever frustrated or down about something, this person would always point out somebody who had it a thousand times worse. Mm -hmm. And that always made me feel better. <laughs> yeah. I have to admit, yeah. you think you've got it bad, there's somebody that's got it a thousand times worse. I mean, you think of um, our dear brother, Chris Nelson, the guy wakes up with pain every single day in his back, yep. literally every day full mm -hmm. of pain. Can yep. you imagine that? And then still turning it around and having that positive mm -hmm. attitude yeah. uh, because of yeah. grace. Kathy was walking around with her brain aneurysm and she would point to people and she said, look how lucky I am. <laughs> wow. <laughs> did she really? Yes, she did. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome, and I, my heart went out to Kathy toward those the last, oh uh, gosh, couple of weeks before uh, mm -hmm. she passed. Yeah. I mean, I just that poor woman. I was, um, mm. man, you know, um, and yet, you know, if she if her brain was functioning properly, she would have just smiled, mm. you know, just well, as she, she did. She did in the hospital when. Oh, she. she yes, she yeah. did. Mm -hmm. Was there still a lot of awareness with her before she passed, or was it just almost completely gone by then? Or I didn't get the sense when you brought her into the church for uh, to show her the the renovations. Uh, I didn't get the sense there was a lot in the way of awareness with her uh, that day. She was aware, just not as a, as a expressive. Right. Right. Yeah. Um. Neil says, lucky Devon, same old Welsh weather here. Um, totally. I think you just, uh, you, you know, you would feel better being in Florida. That would, that would, that would solve your problems, I think. Um, I told Brian too, man, I was like, I, I would, you can come down here. Uh, if we ever have a conference and we invite him down, we're going to have to do it like in the middle of July. And have Brian here, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and have it outside. Yeah. You know? <laughs> oh yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, Douglas Graham's in the house. How are you, man? I continue. I, I hey, look, I still lift you up in prayer because I remember the prayer request was had to do with uh, spiritual opportunities that you have uh, where you're living. So it's uh, it's great seeing your name. Uh, Hurricane Lori, uh, Lori loves green. She's talked, she had survived Hurricane Fred, she says. Uh, rocked my trailer and left the only, and left the only thing was something, the only thing left was something down in the back of some kind of fencing. That's all the damage I got. Praise the Lord. Fantastic. Mm. Fantastic. Neil Marinada says, uh, he says he's doing good. Uh, Chris Nelson says, Amen, brothers. We plant and water, and God gives the increase. Uh, what does it mean that when God gives the increase? Is that like a, I mean, what, does it, what is it that God increases in, exactly when, when, in, that, in that context? Do we increase um, in our spiritual understanding and knowledge that kind of strengthens us? Are we... It's a strengthening of the inner man that we have because of the uh, people planting and watering? or Well, the increase in the context of the passage, if you're talking about 1 Corinthians 3, right. is uh, and it's the increase in, in ministry and the interaction of the body with itself. It's the body building on a proper foundation. And God's the one that supplies the 
the, the information, all we do is broadcast it, and then, <laughs> then, then the doctrine just works. Right. Um, let me see here. I had some notes on this, and I don't know. Can you tell me if I'm wrong here? Uh, this illustration of the husbandry shows us how only because cause you have here in these verses um, I have planted of uh, 1 Corinthians 3 6 I have planted Apollos watered but God gave the increase so then neither is he that planteth anything neither he that watereth but God that giveth the increase and I wonder I don't even know what I said here. This illustration of the husbandry shows us how only because of God are they able to increase in their spiritual growth. You know, but increase in ministry, I think, probably sound, makes more sense. Because everybody that the Lord had received during his earthly ministry, he considered all those people a gift from the Father. Mm. You remember he talking about that right. in prayer with the Father. Everybody that the Father, he had considered them all gifts of the Father. Mm hmm so if you whether you plant or you water in everything the increase in ministry or in the numbers in your church it's always god that gets the glory for it because mm -hmm. he's the one that provides the increase well again he says he that planteth and he that watereth are one what are you planting right and what are you watering with right well <laughs> it's god that supplies the seed bag right it's god that uh, supply it's he's talking about the word of god right Right. I mean, what do you water? If you plant the seed of God's word, what do you water it with? Right, the word. With, well, with living the word. water. How about that? So, the living water. Yeah. Mm. Yep. So, in that particular insight, he said, "We uh, labors together with God. Uh, every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. But that's only if he's planting the right crop and watering in the proper manner." Right. And, and so then, yes, we're engaged in it, but it's not of our origin. We we didn't create the seed, right? So if we the, didn't we didn't even purchase the seed, it was it, the seed is given to us. So the crop is who does the crop belong to? Us or God? And if the water is poisoned with bad doctrine, you won't get any spiritual growth out of that plant. That's correct. <laughs> but then that's what that's what. Right. Uh, First Corinthians three ten is all about right. You know, right. let every man take heed right. how he buildeth thereupon. Thereupon, right, right. Um, uh, Bob Picard says so many people look to the pastor for all things. Well, hmm. I look to you for all things, brother. Uh, I find uh, I find it was really a blessing to miss church because of a family medical situation. The body functions because it's. Mm -hmm. Why is mu I don't understand why the music is playing on my phone. Um. <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> I, I don't understand why. Okay, yeah. sorry. It's there's no reason. Uh, sorry. Is is your technology running them up? <sighs> Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, it's got a mind of its own. Um, I find it was really a blessing to miss church because of a family medical situation. The body functions because it's attached to mm -hmm. the head, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, did the fishbowl life ever bother you? I've had discussions with some pastors about living that fishbowl life and having every word, every move, everything you do scrutinized. Mm -hmm. Um, I had gotten to the point where it didn't take me too long after I had first become associate pastor that I actually grew to love that and I didn't I wasn't opposed to it because it just meant I needed to perfect my walk you know it was a constant form of accountability yeah. to keep me honest yeah. you know the, the fishbowl aspect didn't bother me as much as the mechanics um, when you are in the fishbowl, by the way, <laughs> what happened? Have you ever looked in a fishbowl? Yeah. What does that, the, the perspective, does it change the perspective when you look into the fishbowl? Well, yeah. 
Yeah, everything's it's weird. larger, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's weird. It's, it's magnified. Yeah. yeah, and people put you in the fishbowl, and it and it magnifies all of your actions and attitudes and and character traits, and and um, and many people, uh, they're wanting to hold you to a higher standard. Well, in a certain sense, we are held to a higher standard. But some people, it's almost like we should be up on this pedestal and not be human at all. Right, right. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a wrong view. I mean, if you just study the Apostle Paul, he had plenty of flaws right. as well. He made many, plenty of bad choices and wrong choices. Right. Uh, he disobeyed direct instructions from God. Right. Uh, he had uh, problems with... Uh, uh, personal relationships. Look at uh, what happened between he and and, and Barnabas. Right. You know, the, right. Paul. Wasn't, <laughs> who was right in that situation, Paul or Barnabas? Neither one of them. <sighs> right. Why? Why neither? Hmm. Why neither? I mean, what was what's the decision that they should have made about John Mark? Well, was there a right or a wrong? I don't. I don't. I'm not saying the decision was right or wrong. The dissension and the way it went about. Oh, okay. Yeah. Was, was right, wrong. Right. Yeah? Right. It, the, the problem wasn't the decision that Paul made. The, it was his the falling out with Barnabas. You know, the, yeah. I, I think the resolution was right. Rather sketchy. <laughs> and and, it, and, uh, and do we not actually have an admission that later on? by Paul that John Mark was of value to his ministry. Oh, yeah, I love that story. Yeah, yeah. I love that story. Um, the, uh, um, Lori says, uh, oh, hello, Pastor Joel Moaz. I love you, brother. I love you way more. Uh, Valerie says, a lot of pressure on men in ministry, especially righteous ones. People have to understand they are not perfect. Well, it helps if the man uh, got up in front of everybody and said, I'm not perfect. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and what you see is what you get, you know. Yeah. Uh, you get a lot of that with Brian. You know, Brian uh, behind the pulpit will admit that there, you know, there are times when Becky and I don't agree. There are times when this happens and stuff. And literally, what you see behind the pulpit, that's what he is. I mean, <laughs> what you see is what you get with that with with Brian. Uh, and I love I love everything about him. Uh, I love the fact that he isn't perfect and he's trying, because I think the attitude should always be: Look, we're not perfect, but this is what we want to aspire to achieve. And uh, we're all in this together. You know, we're all studying the word together. We all have common goals. We're all striving for the ministry. Uh, so let's esteem the others better than yourself. And let's, uh, you know, let's run that race together and run it hard and see how, how far we can get. Um, Karen says, continue to pray for Brother Eric Newman. Lonnie passed away Friday night from CV. Eric Newman on, on YouTube, Eric Newman? Really? Oh, the poor guy. The poor guy. Um, there are videos I remember of the two of them talking about doctrine and the wife. They're, they're like he would read something from... I don't know, some ridiculous, like a charismatic book or a Catholic book or something, and what they're saying about whatever is just so ridiculous. And she would just, he would he would be in the passenger seat in the car reading this book, and she'd be driving and just laughing her head off, you know. It's her la I remember her laughter very well. Um, oh, that's a real shame. Lori Howell says, uh, continue to pray for Brother Eric. Absolutely. Dan said, was Steve Clip here? Yes, he was. He had expressed um, difficulties he was having, making ends meet, because of the mandates. Poor brother. How you doing, Dan? I love you, man. I really do. Uh, Sean McGee says, Clip seems to be under the radar. Uh, he'll... 
yeah, he'll, I'll never lose sight of him in my prayers, that's for sure. We will absolutely pray for him today. Sean McGee said, or uh, Neil, um, Valerie says, uh, success, the world has it wrong. True success comes from within. That's right. Uh, Bobby says, pastors all need prayers. I'm thankful and pray for mine all the time. And you're, our pastors, the pastors here, pray for you, Bobby. We really do. Um, Douglas says, Neil, I could be better. Eyesight problems, but could be worse. Uh, Bobby says, true ministry is just looking up and teaching the truth in love. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, and I think it's important today to be a model of grace. You know, that we don't, you don't hear a lot of talk about that, but I think modeling grace in your life, in your marriage, with the, with the people in your ministry is easier said than done. Mm -hmm. That's an easy thing to preach behind the pulpit, but, but putting it into practice, making sure you're speaking truth and love, all way with grace, seasoned with salt, you know, that's, uh, mm -hmm. that takes practice. Mm -hmm. That's not that's not always an easy thing. Romans fourteen can be a difficult chapter in application, mm. and uh, we, we're often quick to set it not another brother. Yeah, and uh, well, it's always easier to to be negative, and it's easier to fight. You it's know, easier because you got that sin curse nature, yeah. the, the, the sin yeah. curse in your body that loves that stuff. Yeah. It's, it's easier to disconnect than it is to engage. It takes a literally zero effort to disengage, right. to disconnect. It, it does take effort and concentration and character yep. to engage. Right. God didn't leave us here to disengage. Or to, he left us here to be engaged. Or to continue to engage in a yes. difficult battle. Yeah. You know, you know, if we follow the, you know, the Pauline analogy, you know, holding forth the word of life, you know, if, if we're lights, uh, that is a conspicuous position to be in. It is not a disconnected position. Right, right, right. Um. Lourdes says, uh, thanks, Karen, for your prayers for Rafi. He is needing it a lot. Uh, Dan says, short-term success is from God. No one would take another breath without God allowing it to be so. That's right. Everything, short-term, long-term, any good that we do, any good works, any fruit we bear, it's always God that gets the mm -hmm. glory. We would have never been able to have done any of those things had it not mm -hmm. been for his son, his sacrifice, and our salvation. Um, Valerie says, taking Bigfoot lessons. I honestly thought uh, last week that um, Bigfoot was uh, Cliff. Uh, Neil says, I downloaded Greg's radio app. Love it. Fantastic. I have such a hard time uh, keeping up with all of the <laughs> all the people I love and all the messages. I, um, I haven't had a chance to even get, get over to the app. Um, but I, I love supporting it. I mean, Grace Radio messages, you know, gr literally Grace messages 24-7 audio all day, all night. How can you not love that? Mm -hmm. Grace does a, ph or Greg does a phenomenal job with it. That's a, that's a really legit great source because it's, you know, I mean, I know YouTube can take up a lot of uh, bandwidth if you're using your phone, audio, gr radio station, audio all day. How can you not love that? That's that's a truly great idea, and I just I commend Greg and Delilah for you know all the hard work they put into their ministry. Uh, I know I have a link to a Greg Reeser message he did last weekend on no reckon and yield. Um, so I love me some Greg Reeser. I, nothing but props to that guy, and I hope I would love for that radio station to be a huge success for him. Um, just as I'd love to see Brian and Becky <laughs> get a lot of success out of that podcast. Mm -hmm. Brian would be annoyed if he knew how much I'm starting to love that podcast more than his sermons. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Oh, my. Oh, man. Becky's adorable. And um, 
She's and she's just very. I mean, Becky went. You know, you want to talk about brutally honest. She talked about her struggles with. Uh, she had um, postpartum uh, after that second child, and she never really lost it, and she really struggled with it for years. And I mean, mm. brutally honest about her own struggles. Mm. Um, and uh, but she's got a passion for the kids and the women, and um, uh, she's a phenomenal lady. I I. I did not know her that well you know mm -hmm. i mean she's kind of a she's kind of a revelation really seeing what she's like and mm -hmm. what her thoughts are on things and uh, she mm -hmm. told brian man she's like look he was all crabby about the humidity and uh, she's like look if you think i'm going to carry this podcast myself you are greatly mistaken buster <laughs> <laughs> absolutely how can you not love that that's just hilarious yeah. uh, <laughs> Uh, hey, William. William, how you doing, man? Uh, William Barron. He says, greetings, saints. Greetings to you, big guy. Dan says, Greg and Delilah are awesome. Um, uh, let me see here. Jordan's messages were very good. I would, wouldn't mind watching that one about <laughs> Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John being in the New Testament. <laughs> um, Dan says, Freddie, Joel, and Hal, last Friday's podcast was awesome. I had to rewatch. Uh, thank you, man. I love having the three amigos. Uh, Fred was tempted to come. He's, he's got a... Um, he, we, we'll see him this week. Fred's birthday is Saturday. So you're gonna, we're going to have to have him here on Friday, and you're going to have to totally embarrass him. Uh, he is... Um, Good luck with that. <laughs> he is, uh, yeah, so he's doing great. He's doing great. He, uh, uh, he had to, uh, he gave the gospel message at a funeral yesterday, did a fine job. And, um, and now he's just, uh, the, the, the wiser half felt it was good for him to just take a day off. And you just need to relax. Uh, we've got Maria J. Martin in the house. Blessings to you, dear pastors. Thank you for your dedication to the gospel. Love and pray for you both. Um, I might pray for you today. I might. William says, try and catch Ted Fellows' message from Sunday when they post. Uh, he was in full stride. Yes, uh, his, um, uh, his series on Acts has been really fantastic. And usually, I think his messages post on like Tuesday night or Wednesday night. Um, actually, yeah, it's like after Wednesday night, they'll like, no, maybe it's Thursday. Now I think about it because they'll post, he'll usually post Sunday and Wednesday at the same time on YouTube. I think they just record it and upload the two messages at the same time. So I don't know. They're not always consistent about when it posts, but I can't, I can't wait to see the next ones. Um, I mean, that's somebody who, whom I would consider success, small town, Literally, small. he's got like twelve hundred people in his in his town. Literally small. I mean, that's as tiny as it's Mayberry mm -hmm. small, and you know he's been there for years. So of the saints, not a huge crowd, but he has been feeding them all these years, and they've been engaging and study together. Yeah. And that's that to me is. I, I think mm -hmm. of Steve Ross, Ted Fellow's success. That's yeah. what I think. Well, generational, uh, generational grace ministry. Um, William says, try and catch, oh, sorry, I already read that. Um, I, I never miss Ted. I try to, or at least I try to never miss him. Uh, Neil says, neighbors have, uh, shunning my family a fair bit because they're not, they've not gotten the thing. Yep. We're all, many of us are going to be shunned now, and that's a new reality that we're going to have to face. Um... Worse, you know, worse things could happen. Yeah, I, you know, I. What does it matter what people think? What matters is what God thinks, mm. and He's already told me everything I am in Christ. Uh, so okay, so it's just a matter of me showing them love, despite, mm. um, despite their wrong thinking. Um, Maria says, "Lots of love to you and Gwen, Pastor's friend." Uh, Karen says it's a no-win situation because the force is towards a specific end, right? And I mean to, t you know, Hal and I were talking about the the mandates before the podcast started because we were we had read the Cliff uh, comments. 
I mean, uh, and, uh, and at one point, how I finally looked at how I said, are we not having the same discussion that people are going to be having when the mark of the beast comes mm-hmm. around here? It's, I mean, you're literally looking at do this or not be allowed to buy and sell. I mean, how can this not be? Uh, it, this goes back to everything we've been saying since the beginning of the podcast. This is, it is how can this not be a prelude? Mm. to what's what's going to come after we're gone i just uh, you know um, from the very beginning we were we knew where all of this was headed and we knew that this may very well be the beginning of the end and if it is i mean i we don't know for certain fred always pointed out that there are things that can happen that can interrupt all of this he talked about emps you know you've got you've got a lot of wars that are on the horizon also uh Mm -hmm. you've got a lot of things that could interrupt this snowballing of mandates and that's that's a possibility there's a lot of things that could delay the inevitable well but i would throw into perspective that our our country's experienced numerous Times they experienced it during the Civil War and the suspension of uh, human rights and and habeas corpus and and everything else uh, during World War II. Uh, I remember when the government uh, I didn't experience it, but I know of it historically. The government uh, confiscated everyone's gold. Yeah. It was illegal to own it. Right. They went right. and and uh, it, you either gave it up or you went to jail. Right. So. Uh, we see this type of militancy from government. I mean, that's the way government works. Uh, the perversion of government is, is heavy-handedness. That's always been true. Right. Uh, and, and you can study our history back over 200 years and see consistently that you have waves of this yeah. uh, type of right. uh, environment that we're experiencing right now. Well, I mean, you get to, uh, and it's, it is scary in the sense that, and I was telling you, I didn't, you know, the whole, the whole shutdown of the argument, you know, you question the narrative and then you, you know, you, or you are censored, banned, whatever. Um, Mm. That is total dictatorship, authoritarian, totalitarian, that is total dictatorship, Mm. monstrous thinking. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're headed into, but yet that's the very much that's the very type of thinking that would implement the mark of the beast after we're gone. Oh, absolutely. So you know, it it should not be a shock to us that no. this kind of thing is here, and um, you know we have to make decisions for ourselves. But we have to, uh, I, and I've got some other articles I want to bring up too. I want to get your get your take on some stuff here, but no reason for any of us to not have hope. And to go through these difficulties with peace, joy, and remember what Paul said about glorying in his infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I'm going to talk about that tomorrow night, too. Remember how to get through the suffering. It's important. And you remember how Paul, we, how we went through in 2 Corinthians 6, the, what he was focused upon while he was suffering. Mm-hmm. The PKLK, the resources, all the resources that were available to him and completely ignored what was being said about him, whether he didn't let what the good things said about him go to his head and he didn't let the bad things said about him go to his heart either. He stayed focused on his walk, pureness, knowledge, long suffering, kindness. And it's that focus on your walk that will help you get through that suffering because what's more important than instead of worrying about how am I going to you know you're focused on your walk how you're doing what you're doing um and you know there were times when Paul had nothing he was naked he was hungry and he had no no place no dwelling place that's how that's the condition he was in when he wrote uh, what was it first Corinthians yeah he was naked and he had no food and he had no dwelling place when he wrote that letter mm-hmm. um you know, Paul has already shown us he is a you we are empowered to get through this and even worse. He's already shown us that we're empowered to get through all of this. Um, um Karen said China and Russia is not mandating, right? Oh, you know, I don't know if I should say there is a oh, I won't say it. The uh, Carnival Cruise Line had, yes, 
twenty six people, twenty seven people, right? And they were they were all required to be uh, uh, to get the get the thing. All of them. You couldn't. You could. And um, and I'm just hearing a lot of stories that it's a, it's a thousand times worse if you get it and you've already been and you've already gotten the thing because your body is just overwhelmed with toxins and it's some in some cases it can't even deal with it and I can't help but wonder with this surge how many of those folks are have already gotten the thing and it's that's why it's so bad for them um neil says the uk soon will be a karen i believe and uk has been debating about whether or not they should allow um church people to actually attend church without having gotten the thing and did i go through all of these articles already i can't remember there was a number of great big paragraph on uh, in the in the news articles today about uh, vaccinations and the church, there's a there's a uh, Baptist church in Georgia that they said they're only going to allow vaccinated people to attend. They fired all of their unvaccinated staff. No children are allowed. Uh, certain governments are saying that only vaccinated are allowed to attend church. They address, threatens arrest for rule breakers. That is on the table in the UK. They've been debating this gone back and forth the uk for now the churches are in the clear but the uk government's like yeah we're it's not off the table uh christian broadway star gets booted from show for not being vaccinated the mormon church urges its members to get vaccinated you've got uh nine states that are have announced uh mandates and the uh, there is an article about a california pastor giving out covid vaccine exemption letters uh which was really weird uh, there, uh, on the happy news, though, that uh, Kenneth Copeland was in the news. <laughs> you got to check out the Kenneth Copeland. I'll, I'll, let me share the link here. I mean, you need, I mean, and I know this, this. You need a laugh. Kenneth Copeland always delivers. Never fails to make me laugh. Uh, he had. Um, let me share this. He during a service. <laughs> uh, he had. Uh, Walked up to a guy in a wheelchair, and guy in the wheelchair is just, I don't know, mumbling stuff, and he healed him and everything, and he did the head thing, and the guy flipped back in the wheelchair, and his feet were flying up. <laughs> uh, uh, that was, I'm sorry, but that was awesome. See? <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Sean McKee says the that's ironic. The free world mandates, but China and Russia don't. Right? Exactly. That's the thing that makes these these this this whole mandate thing unique is that I mean, and apart from those exceptions, you're looking at a global phenomenon for the most part, which yeah. is what's unique. I mean, we've had periods in American history where we've had takeovers and you know the fdr period and the great society and all this stuff but what's going on with the passports man that's global um and we got to did 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 i miss that that okay um cliff if you're out there brother we're gonna pray for you every day absolutely you and your family That is an interesting dichotomy, though. Totalitarian governments around the world that that aren't mandating, right? And and so so called <laughs> uh, uh, pinnacles of individual freedom are. Um. Uh, Karen's pointing out the interstate travel ban is going to really impact the supply chain, essentially. Yes, it will. That's a concern. Uh, Karen said that is uh, whatever food is available with one drop off of China shipping and the fires and drought on the West Coast. Uh, Valerie says, take your time driving, Joel. Enjoy the journey. I assure you it will not be snowing, but the trees will be turning. Oh, uh, that didn't that sound nice? 
Uh, William said, our baby turned 20 yesterday, getting old, experiencing an empty nest. Ah, fantastic. Um, uh, Dan says, how too much bass on the new hearing aid? Too much bass. Yeah, right. Uh, Karen says, I have a bunch of those booklets, Bible contra uh, contradictions. I have shelves of different books and booklets. Uh, to give to new and potential uh, believers, right? Um, Neil says, my wife is in the garden right now. William preparing bunting, etc., for my grandparents' tw granddaughter's 20th birthday tomorrow. How awesome is that? Uh, Sean McGee says, rain has stopped. Oh, well, back to work. That's awesome. Let me see here. Um, Karen Valerie says, "I don't ha I don't need a PhD, just reading glasses." That's right. Uh, you've got enough common sense. That's uh, that's all you need. Um, yeah, Karen says, "If we weren't meant to read the Old Testament, why did our apostle quote them and apply them so often?" Exactly, mm -hmm. hundred and forty plus. And I, I dare say, um, I actually want to go through Joel Fink's book a second time. I dare say, I don't think he ever had the same reason twice when he quoted scripture. It was always different. It was really interesting. Neil says, I love the Old Testament. Um, it's awesome seeing you here, Freddie Bear. Awesome. I love you dearly, big guy. Okay. All right, let me... Um, Uh, let me ask you a question, Hal. We've got what eleven? It's eleven thirty. I got to ask these other questions here. I got all this stuff on my plate. Look at this. Okay, so let me, now there was an article last night about Justice Roberts. There's also articles. There's also some articles on that list about left-handed people in the Bible, <laughs> uh, which was actually really fascinating. So if you go to the website and you look at the Christian news page and go to mm -hmm. the bottom, there's two articles on left-handed people in the Bible, mm -hmm. but there's not a lot to say about it. It's just like, oh, okay, they were left-handed. Actually, they were all Benjamite. They were all from the tribe of Benjamin. And, and it gave them an advantage when they were using slings on the battlefield. Hmm. So does that mean Paul was left-handed? I would have to mean that. Well, I mean, because it seems like it was a genetic thing with the tribe of Benjamin that they were all left-handed. It was so bizarre. And they were all the, there were three references, and it was all in a military context. Hmm. So having, being a lefty it was an advantage on the battlefield, yeah. apparently. Uh, okay, that's, and, and that's literally all, all that can be said about left-handed people in the Bible. <laughs> um, but in any event, Justice Roberts it was an article about how he was right when they, when he did the dissenting view uh, after the Supreme Court passed down the um, the their verdict on same sex marriages. He says, "Well, the next thing will be polygamy," and everybody just just obliterated him for it. And the article is saying, "No, he's right," and now polygamy is gaining support in Harvard Law. Well, even worse than that, you're gonna you're gonna uh, uh, pedophilia. Yeah, it's not, yeah, and you already have a number of. There is a strong political movement right. towards legalization. Right, and there and there have been a number of magazines that have been openly promoting it and saying, "Well, it's not. We're just. It's just. You know. It's just. We're not doing anything. It's just having these feelings." And uh, my question is, can you? Is it possible now? Is it okay to have polygamy in the age of grace? Now, there are a number of countries out there that actually where it is still legal. Africa, the Middle East, there are countries where um, it's legal only for Muslims. Uh, places like Russia, it's illegal, but they don't, uh, they don't, they don't, um, they won't prosecute people who are doing it. Um, you had I mean, you had concubines in the Old Testament. Well, well, multiple wives. Both David and Solomon had multiple wives as well as concubines. 
Um, um, now, do you have in the Paul's epistles um, mm-hmm. the qualifications for bishops, deacons, and elders? All three said one wife. Exactly. Uh, second, First Timothy uh, three two. A bishop mu- then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. Uh, First Timothy three twelve, talking about deacons. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife. And then you have in Titus one six, talking about the elders. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife. Now, does that mean that everybody? All marriages should only be one man and one woman, or does this mean that it's okay to continue in polygamy, but the people who would be the men who would be leaders in the church must mm. be married to only one wife? Yes, <laughs> uh, it's obvious about the church leadership that it's uh, one man and one woman. Uh, it doesn't take a, an in-depth study of the Word of God to understand that that's God's design of one man and one woman. Right. I mean, go to the first book of the Bible and, and, you, <laughs> and you, you see God's institution of marriage. Uh, you know, Cleave to his wife. Yeah, yes. that little you know, thing. He said, shall leave his father and his mother. Well, I mean, it, right. <laughs> that obviously was not meant for Adam <laughs> because he didn't have right, right. A, uh, a father and a mother. So it, <laughs> it, it was God's uh, declaration for what was to take place from that point in time. Right. And we can argue uh, about that, but again, it goes back to our expectations of, of government. Is it government's job to, other than protecting us from ourselves, to legislate uh, a lot of people's life choices. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you see um, the Lord Jesus Christ walking on the earth. Uh, it's not condoning the activity for, you know, look at Rome. I mean, there wasn't anything more corrupt uh, morally than than Rome and Roman government and that, that type of thing. And, and yet, uh, he never put forth any type of idea that it was our uh, the citizen's job, the Christian's job to engage that and try and change that. Right, right. Uh, we can't be responsible for how other people live their lives. We have to be responsible how we live our own. Right, right. So, so I see that. I see the principle of liberty, individual liberty, as being biblical. Now, if you had, I mean, if you were speaking to a man in Africa... And he asks you about polygamy. He'd say, well, polygamy is legal here. Uh, should I or shouldn't I? Or should I only be married? Would you, would you counsel him that he should only be married to one woman and leave it at that? Well, if, he had, just- I, if he had one wife, I would counsel him to, to remain that way. But if he had multiple wives, uh, would I counsel him, okay, you pick, you pick the one that you want and kick get the rid rest of all of the them others? Out? No, no, I would right. never do that. Right, right, right. Um, all right, let me see what's in the comments here. I just had to get your thoughts on that. Uh, that was awesome, Pastor. Uh, Dan says, uh, Neil, is Y and E what makes other words masculine or feminine? <laughs> yeah, you'd think. Uh, Florida couldn't cope with my accent, Joel. Uh, I think I could cope with anything if you were here. I'll make do. If I have to get out Google Translate, that's what I'll totally do so I could communicate with Neil. I love you, man. Um, Dan says, interesting, I had a dream last night about uh, someone without legs. Uh, Justin Cox says, please pray for dear brother Eric Newman as he just lost his precious wife, Lana. Yep, yep, yeah, we have him down. Uh, uh, Valerie says, I work in a hospital and count my blessings daily when there so many are far worse, believe me. Yes, absolutely. Um, there's always the somebody I remember I had a friend who once shared with me a video of these people who literally had to walk two miles each way just to get water you know there's those people still exist yes they do they, they still and then they how some organization invented this thing where they could actually rather than carry these buckets of water they a more feasible way of transporting water from one place to the next w- without mm-hmm. having to uh, be such a strain on your muscles. Um, 
Yeah, that still exists. That sounds like heaven to me right now. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's not. It's not. I've been in portions of the world where people live in not much more than cardboard and corrugated steel. Right, right. They have no windows. They have no doors. Mud huts uh, right. with or, metal you know, roofs. Metal or, or whatever right. the case would be. Uh, like you said, dirt floors. Um, uh, it will change your your perspective. Uh, and our <laughs> people in prison in our country, uh, there are people in, in, in other countries that, that would practically kill to be able to live that well. Uh, yeah. We, we are very, very, very fortunate to be where we are. Um. Dan said, in my dream, this girl without legs was getting off work and putting on fake legs to go into the public. <laughs> uh, Bob Picard says, um, so many churches create programs in order to bring people in, but it's God that should be the one enabling those in the body to be the program. I mean, I think the. I mean, we are so conditioned to everything, to having this watered down experience that involves tons and tons of music, mm. emotionally exhausting uh, experience with music, and then you have this watered down gospel that not, watered down presentation that might, maybe if you're lucky, reference one or two verses, and it's all perfectly mm. emotionalistic, mm -hmm. uh, with all of this uh, incredible uh, mm. background and technology mm -hmm. going on. When the thing that people the centerpiece of church has to be the word itself right um and yeah. and not just that the mm -hmm. word rightly divided yeah. and the sound doctrines of grace yeah. which for me starts with the gospel yeah. and then identification and then yeah. everything else well that's the thing that troubles me there's nothing wrong with programs that bring people in the door right I there's would, absolutely I would agree. I, you know i i wish we could have some of those programs the the the, the disappointing thing is those that are tremendously successful in bringing in large numbers of people, uh, and then they get in, and then they're not exposed to the truth. Right. right. That's the tragedy of the whole situation. The, the sin of the thing is not the programs. Right. The, the sin of the thing is, is diluting truth. Right, exactly. And if, if, if you have to dilute truth in order to have large numbers. Right. Right. That's evil. Right, totally. Um, uh, Neil says, in my old church, they started inviting guests who spoke in tongues, etc., charismatic types. Glad I left. Yeah. Um, uh, a bunch of liars, eh, Neil? Good point, Hal, regarding fishbowl, water, and light enhance the view. Deep thought. Here's a deep thought. Do you know, even though you're staring at the fish, the fish is just doesn't care. And he just keeps swimming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So maybe that helps a little bit. Well, that's just it. We look into the fishbowl, and that doesn't change who you the are. identity of the fish or the environment exactly. of the fish or the exit. Exactly. You know? Now, you can sit there and tap on the glass a little bit, and it might attract its attention, but... Uh, Sometimes people like to tap on our glass, too, you know. Bob says, I don't mind the fishbowl. One just has to be as honest and transparent as the fish is in a bowl. You are looking mm -hmm. at a little fish in that bowl. A congregant is looking at a frail, imperfect man in Christ like every other believer. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um uh, Valerie says, if couples agree all the time, it would be boring. I love discussing and challenging questions. Um, that's awesome. Um, I was just thinking of a... Hey, Gerard's in the house. Toe row row. Uh, Grace and peace, saints of the most high. Awesome having you here, big guy. How you doing? Uh, Lori says, um, actually, let me go. Uh, uh, Neil says, just answered. Uh, uh, okay, let me see here. Uh, Mike Temple's in the house. He says, I'm not a guinea pig for the NWO. That's right. Hmm. Well, that NWO is about to um, make, its, uh, make its appearance finally. 
there is no certain uh, variant. Don't mutate that way. Right. Um, Mike Temple says, I have an amazing immune system given to me by God Almighty. That's right. You and me both. Um... Uh, Mike says, uh, I owe, and I get this, uh, I work at Walmart this whole time, hardly ever wearing a mask and have not been sick. Uh, the, uh, I heard Walmart is, is mandating all of these, these things, all this, the thing also. Um, I've been, I mean, for anybody who's worried about coming back to church, I have literally been going to this church almost every day ever since the lockdown. <laughs> I've been in here literally almost every single day, and most of the time, six days a week, sometimes seven. And uh, I've never gotten, never gotten sick. Um, um, or it says, um, Mike Temple says, mine says, uh, even if you had it, you have to wear one, but my overnight managers are cool. Oh, you got to love that. Well, there you go. Overnight, third shift stuff. Um, William says, where do I find Joel Fink's books? He's the um, part, there's a link to it beneath the, the video. It's the, called Parsons Publishing. But I'll give you the link here. Let me see. Um, and actually, I got to say, I had gone through, after I had interviewed him, I had gone through his book on uh, Believer's True Identity. Um, he, did a, he did an identification book uh, that I did not know about. He did the, he, as far as I know, he did the first true mid-acts dispensational identification book, and it's legitimately good. It was, it was legit. There was nothing in there I disagreed with. Or, in fact, I loved... I loved his uh, approach because every chapter was identified with this, identified with death, identified with burial, identified with resurrection. I did, and he just and he just went through the whole list and it was fantastic. I loved what he did. Um, uh, Karen quotes Ecclesiastes ten two: A wise man's heart is at his right hand, but a fool's heart at his left. Um, you could just get the political implications there. Mike says, I agree, Karen. He's completely insane. Uh, Kenny loves the, co uh, loves the Pope. All right, let me see here. Uh, Neil says, one wife is enough. Thank you. <laughs> see, I would think this would be a matter of common sense. <laughs> How much drama can you? I mean, surely that just that just screams problems, <laughs> way more problems than you would normally have. Uh, Dan says Joel in the past circular staircases were designed as a defense, giving one an advantage in a sword fight based on being right or left-handed. Oh, no kidding, no kidding. I did not know that. Uh, I am left-handed, and so that that interests me. The whole left-handed thing interests me. Um, the uh, as they say, the left-handed people are the only ones. I mean, because because it's it's the opposite of your brain is the one where you place your most. So if you if you're right-handed, then the emphasis is more on the left-hand side of your brain, which is mm -hmm. uh, more logic, critical thinking, and the, the but it. But it is said that left-handed people are the only people are the only ones who are on the uh, in their right mind. Uh, the uh, which is why they tend to be more creative too. I guess that's on the right-hand side. So I have heard. Uh, Karen says, Mike, I think it goes higher up than the uh, than that that certain uh, <laughs> certain man at the Vatican. Uh, Valerie says, I question why a woman would want to agree to polygamy unless forced to. Totally. Well, yeah, that's actually a problem in, the, in uh, Africa and in the Middle East. That's actually a problem where that is a part of... Now, there are some places that... Uh, that that year in and I, that year I spent studying uh, Philemon. I had read a number of books on slavery in the Bible and in the and in the Roman Empire, 
And there are a lot of people would argue that there is actually more slavery today than had existed before in time past. And one of those reasons is because in all those places where polygamy is legal, you have a lot of forced marriages and forced conversions mm -hmm. and a lot of abductions of children and forced into slave labor. And I mean, those, the, the numbers are mm -hmm. astronomical. Uh, so mm -hmm. I, I, if you ask me, anybody that's forced into marriage, forced into a conversion, um, that that to me is slavery, and uh, and so polygamy is is not always consensual mm -hmm. in those places. Well, you're talking about a corrupt religious system. I'm not totally w without identifying the ideology. Is it's it's obvious uh, when uh, women become chattel. Right. Uh, when women are denied any type of education, they're not even supposed to know how to read. Um, uh, <laughs> it's like the old saying, you know, keep them pregnant and keep them barefoot. You know, that's yep. it's just uh, terrible. Uh, it's, it's awful. Uh, George talking about mainstream media. That was hilarious. He quotes Ecclesiastes 1, 9 to 10. Uh, Valerie says fish only have a three second memory. I can relate to that. Can you? <laughs> yeah. Relate to what? <laughs> exactly. Uh, Bobby says, my friend's son got the thing. Next day, ran 103 fever, chills, sore throat, getting an infusion to help with his immune system on Friday. Couldn't go to hospital as it was full capacity. Right. Um, tons and tons of stories from people I know. Uh, we have uh, one guy who uh, is going to be losing his uh, position because of the mandate. He, he had, for the last few weeks, been commenting on how everybody's been getting sick after they get it. And some of it, uh, some of them have not fully recovered. Um, and just, you know, uh, it's almost predictable in terms of a pattern. Now, a lot of people come back. But you don't know what the long-term problems are going to be. And we have a member here who uh, is definitely having issues as a result of the second thing that they got. And it's, um, it's, a, it's real. Those are real issues. Uh, Valerie says, um, yes, I believe so. That is why they don't mind a fishbowl. They forget they just swam in that direction. That sounds like a great life to me. <laughs> you have a three-second memory, so every time you swim around that fishbowl, it's a new experience. <laughs> you got to love that. Um, uh, Dan says, Neil, most fish are smarter than those with PhDs. That's totally right. Uh, Gerard says, and you, and you know the sad part? These fishes have longer attention span than the average millennial of today. <laughs> or old person. Uh, Lori says... Uh, Watch it. <laughs> now a CV, but with a cold. Karen says, irony, one wife is common sense, yet look at the actions of the wisest man in the world. Exactly. Which was his undoing. Totally. Um, let me see here. Um... Uh, Karen says, yes, there are. there is more slavery today than ever before. And look to the future, Revelation 18, 13, slaves and the souls of men. Uh, Valerie says, I agree, Joel, a form of slavery. And it's not just the, the poor uh, women and the teenagers and the abductions who are forced into these marriages and forced conversions, which always breaks my heart. But also, if you ask me, anybody who is under certain um uh like living in places like north korea and china they are they are living in a form of slavery mm -hmm. um now that type of slavery is completely different than the form of slavery that existed at the birth of our nation uh but i mean that was just abductions of individuals to be forced into slave labor which was absolutely diabolical and completely evil and wrong yes. but flavor but but that doesn't, and even though that's not that practice isn't taking place today, there are still many forms of slavery today. And he, it, in fact, you could argue mm -hmm. there's even more forms of slavery today than had ever existed back in those days. Yeah. Well, it's still very common and and legal in most Islamic countries. Right, and you are, uh, uh, and you can you can argue that some cults, even the mafia, is a form of slavery because once you get in, you can never get out. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of thing. Oh, you can get out. Yeah, the, the, in yeah. a fine box. It, right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. 
Um, um, of accidents at Karen's calling it. Uh, um, I totally agree with you, Mike Temple. Bobby Wilson says, Neil, thank you for your prayers for Wayne. Absolutely. Um, Pastor Hal, if how do you how can you know for certain where you're going to spend the rest of eternity? <laughs> do you think you could know? Uh, I think it's possible we can know. I think if um, certain uh, uh, people who we love who passed away were able to be right here with us right now, I think they would all tell us they would want you to know for certain that you know where you're yeah. going to spend the rest of eternity. Yep. Yeah. Well, the scripture says and declares that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, there's the, the dichotomy, if you will, uh, the condition that we, of sin that we inherited from our father Adam that's been passed down through time, and where that put us in, in, the, uh, in our relationship to a totally righteous God God says, I have a remedy for that. I can fix that. Uh, I can fix it so that you can live forever. I'll give you a free gift. Uh, all we need to do is, is to acknowledge uh, the gift. And, and how do you receive a gift? Uh, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're all less than perfect. We're all less than righteous. Um, we need to be righteous. How does that happen? It's not something that we can do. Uh, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. God gives us eternal life. God gives us his righteousness. And, and how is that obtained? Well, he offers the gift, and the gift is described in the news of the gospel, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So the question is, is... Not whether or not you want to live forever, because you're going to live forever somewhere. Uh, to understand your destination and to have eternal life, it's just believe the gospel, the good news that God gives to us so that we can have that free gift of eternal life. Um, all right, how about a word of prayer? Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we, uh, we, have a sense, we, have, we all have this sense that there are rough times ahead, and some of us, we just don't know what to do. And um, I think of Cliff Matthews, first of all, our dear brother Cliff, whom we love, who is running out of options, I totally lift him up to you. I lift up to you his circumstances, the decisions he has to face, um, and, um, you know, Father, I just pray that uh, he will find solutions that will help him be able to just survive. Um, and I pray that we all will, if we have to face those similar difficulties, that we may all stand on the truth of your word. We'll stand perfect and complete in all your will that... You know, our, despite the suffering, our faith will grow exceedingly during this period. And we will also grow with charity uh, toward everyone. And all of the, no matter what decisions we make, that everything that we do will abound to your glory. Um, I just pray, Father, that we'll be able to fulfill all that good pleasure of your, of your will, your goodness, the work of faith with power. Um, but we think of a number of folks here. We think of Neil, uh, Cliff Matthews, first and foremost. We think also of Sharon McGinty and her grandson, the Sinir family, Mark 8, 36, uh, Pamela Bloodworth and her uh, a number of uh, prayer requests, including her boss, uh, her cousin, uh, Jerry Bloodworth, Jerry's sisters, all of them, uh, Crystal, General Lee and Betty, um, the uh, Carrie Lynn, uh, uh, Larry's boss, Carrie Lynn uh, Velms. Uh, we think of um, uh, Paul Mears Jr. Uh, with the liver cancer. Um, Eric Newman, we think of him who just lost his wife, Lonnie. Lana, I think it's her name is. 
poor Eric, I feel my heart goes out to him. Um, we think of the entire Lightfritz family, of course. Alan Parrish, Mary Poulos, Sam Gerhart with a stage four cancer. Sonia and Brian, um, their entire family. Um, um, Lori Howell and her family. Marie Anderson, her family. Uh, uh, Jake and uh, Suzanne and Jake's dad, Neil Maranatha. Our dear, bro dear brother, Neil, out there in Wales, whom we love. Uh, I think of his wife, Mandy, his, uh, uh, I think of Garrison, Niger, Nigel, Sue Ellen and Duke, the unspoken request that I have. <clears throat> I think of Kay Dico's um, niece, niece's daughter, uh, Diana, who has the liver issues. Um, I still lift up Rodney B., Douglas Graham, um, Bob Picard, Roger and Kate, Darone, News Unit, uh, Greg and Delilah, um, Robin Scott, Poppy, Bricky's uh, son, James, uh, Karen Gray, her stepdad, her mother, her brother, Doug, all of them. I totally lift them all up. Cliff Matthews again, Mary Beth and Betty Jo, Justin Cox, pardon me, Justin Cox, Dan the Man, his family, Oral Carter, Anita, Anita with the uh, blood clots, and we think of uh, her brother Arturo with the cancer, Sherry and Al, and uh, certainly think of uh, uh, her son Adam, uh, Dave and Nancy Perry, Jay and Lisa Montero, and their entire family, uh, Debbie Bridges, Fred and Gwen, Hal and Marilyn, Deborah D and her daughter, Mike and Renee. I totally lift them up. I love those saints. M Renee, they lost their son whose funeral we went to yesterday um those are dear dear people we just we totally lift them up i just i love them dearly uh chris nelson frank ledoux maria in colorado uh randy and ellen and their son peter uh lourdes and her son rafi bobby wilson mike moriarty uh jeff ashley uh, Larry's daughter, Wendy, Amy Stewart, she's, um, uh, she's going to have some opportunities for ministry with her family, so I lift that up. Uh, Craig and Alice, and Alice in particular, who's got um, requests for Karen, Andy, and Oscar. Uh, Maureen McCune, I know there's some issues in the family with one of the grandbabies in custody. Uh, George and Sue Ann and their trip, and George's ablation coming up. Uh, we think uh, also of Brad Klein, you know, and the eyes tre treatments he's had. He had the treatment he had done on his eye, and I just pray he's able to fully recover. Uh, Bev Johnson, who fell. Um, I think I'll just leave it at that. <sighs> Father, I just I lift all these all these saints up and their families. And these circumstances that we're in. And how difficult they are. And I just pray that we will remember to follow the example of Paul in terms of the, the fact that we have been empowered by your grace to be able to endure all long-suffering with joy. And that we will, we will endure those afflictions while also praising you, feeling joy every step of the way. And that we will... Um, not just not just glory in our infirmities, but we will also focus our minds on our walk as we go through that suffering, celebrating the sufficiency of your grace, keeping our minds focused on your word, finding comfort in your word, and that we will be strengthened by your spirit and that we will be able to endure all of these difficulties in, this, in the, the same manner as the Apostle Paul. That everything we do will be to the honor and glory of your son. That, that the, the testimony of the suffering servant will inspire, inspire others to want to come to a saving faith in your son. And that all of this, all of the 
hardships we're about to go through that they will all will all glorify you glorify your grace your glorious gospel and it'll glorify your son who died for us we love you so very much we are truly so grateful for everything we have in your son and we just lift up all these saints and ask all these things in the name of your son our savior amen well, thank you guys. Thank you for coming out. We should uh, we should be back here tomorrow. Um, be back here tomorrow, ten a.m. with the Bible study with Pastor Fred. I'll be here tomorrow night. Uh, I will do a few more. I'm going to do some more thoughts on suffering in light of so much of what's going on. We're going to. I'm going to just try to highlight all the major important points that we need to keep in mind, which we've gleaned from this series on suffering. I think it's. It's really needed, and then I'll get started on a on another series. I'm also Renee was the one who had asked me to do the series on angels, so I'm waiting for her to kind of, you know, she's still she's still recovering from the loss of her son in the funeral yesterday, so I'm putting off the angels a little bit until she's ready for it because it's all for her. Um, I love you guys. I love you dearly, every last one of you, and I hope you guys um, have a truly bad day. We'll be back here at 10 a.m. tomorrow. We're not having any guests on Thursday and Friday, so it's all about, uh, it basically is an open chat week. Um, so anything you guys want to talk about, we're all ears. And um, I hope you take good care of yourselves. I really do. We will see you here tomorrow at 10 a.m. Take care. Bye.